Dr. Casey Olson. I'm with the Department of Animal Sciences and Industry at Kansas State University. Let's ask some questions. What's so special about the flint hills? Um, that's just subtracting the water. Um, 4,000 pounds of, of dry forage per acre without agronomic input. Well, gosh, how is that possible? In a healthy native prairie, especially the the tall grass prairie, there are leguminous native forbs that fix atmospheric nitrogen and provide uh, for natural fertility. And the combination of, of frequent pr prescribed fire, the amount of forage that we produce, the self-fertilizing forage, uh, yearling cattle gains can exceed two and a half pounds per day during the summer. So this very relatively small geographical area because of its incredible level of productivity uh, is annually home to about 1.3 million stalker cattle. These are cattle that generally arrive at 500 pounds and leave before they reach a thousand pounds to the feeding industry to the west of us. Okay, and that those cattle are our bread and butter. But in addition to those stalker cattle, uh, the Flint Hills and the Osage Hills are, are home to about 500,000 uh, beef cows that stay here year round. Now because of these, this set of resources, um, our rural communities have sustainable income. Our ranching families are, are financially healthy. Um, as, a, as a participant in this industry, um, you know, I, I will say that ranching is fun, but I won't leave it at that, okay? Ranching, no matter how much you enjoy it, can't truly be fun unless you can make a living doing it. And honestly, folks, uh, the Flint Hills is one of the few places where that is not absurdly difficult and complex. Now, I like to tell people that we have only two Achilles heels in this ecosystem. Okay, the first Achilles heel is that in the Flint Hills and the Osage Hills, we are almost completely dependent on surface water for livestock. The groundwater here is not easy to access, nor is it particularly strong. We need things like ponds okay, to reliably water our cattle. When there is a drought, we almost always run out of water before we run out of grass. Okay, the second Achilles heel, and the one I'm going to spend most of the time talking about today, is that it is susceptible to invasion by exotic plants. Our soils, our climate, our, our wide open spaces, if you want to think about them that way, uh, almost invite non-native plants to uh, establish a foothold and make a real mess. So a little bit about the value of prescribed fire. So, you know, all ranchers in the Flint Hills wrestle with control of woody stem plants and we can control them very effectively with frequent prescribed fire, like I said, at uh, return intervals of between one and four years. And as a rancher would do it, I and my staff have estimated that it costs about 75 cents an acre to do that, uh, to, to have a uh, a burn in any given year. Now if we were to use herbicides okay, to control woody stem plants or other unwanted plants, we could expect to spend about three dollars an acre for you know 1950s technology like 2,4-D or up to eighty-eight dollars an acre for more modern uh, combination specialty herbicides. Okay, another option we have is that we can uh, turn the key on some diesel powered piece of machinery with uh, a big mower on it or, or some similar cutting device. Okay, and we can control woody stem plants uh, in that way mechanically. Okay, but we can expect with machine costs, fuel costs, um, to spend between $85 and $300 an acre for that activity. So. Compared with other methods, burning looks pretty attractive from a cost standpoint, but um, in any given year, okay, when a, when a rancher conducts a prescribed fire in the spring of the year, okay, they can expect each one of those 
yearling cattle under their care to gain an extra two to three tenths of a pound per day during the early portion of the grazing season. Okay, if you do the math on that, that's about 30 pounds of additional growth, okay, at a cost of about 75 cents per acre. If you think that the average stalker calf is probably going to occupy a three acre footprint during the, the 90 day period at the beginning of the grazing season, okay, your cost to apply prescribed fire per animal is about uh, $2.25. Okay, the benefit um, for that uh, process is you get 30 extra pounds of weight to sell uh, at a value of between 55 and 55 cents and one dollar per pound if uh, historical values of gain hold true. Okay, the thing that we all get, whether you're a rancher or not, okay, is a preserved native prairie, a preserved tall grass prairie. And in my opinion, that is beyond placing a value. Uh, I think it's a priceless maintenance mechanism. So we use prescribed fire in the Flint Hills as we've been taught to. Uh, sometime in the uh, 1960s, the ranching community figured out that if you burn in late March through the month of April, uh, you get excellent woody stem plant control and you get excellent livestock performance. Okay, but we've, we've kind of been dogmatic about using prescribed fire in that relatively narrow window of time. We've never really asked the question, well, can we use it for other reasons at other times of the year for um, profitability of the, the ranching community, profitability of the, the ecosystem? Okay, when we use fire during that narrow window of time, we create issues with smoke. Okay, we generate a tremendous amount of smoke when between two and three million acres get burned annually. And unfortunately, downwind municipalities have to deal with degraded air quality. Um, that's, that's really a fairly easy phenomenon to explain. Okay, in the, in the window of time that we're talking about, that traditional fire season, the days are mild and warm, the nights are cool. And when we put a bunch of smoke up into the upper atmosphere, it will travel up there, it will stay up there until it encounters cold air. Okay, and then that smoke will sink. It will sink to ground level. And if that happens to be co-located with a city like Lincoln, Nebraska, or Omaha, Nebraska, or St. Paul, Minnesota, or Knoxville, Tennessee, believe it or not, um, we can cause measurable downgrades in air quality in those municipalities. Okay, that's problematic. Um, you know, if if you are a licensed polluter, an EPA licensed polluter in one of those municipalities, you could potentially be fined, okay, when there are particulate uh, matter exceedances in the air, when there are ozone exceedances in the air. And the heck of it is, they didn't necessarily cause the problem. Uh, the second issue, in my opinion, is much more dire, much more um, problematic. Uh, in that there are people with respiratory sensitivities that live in these areas that can become extremely ill due to complications with asthma or related diseases uh, when we downgrade air quality with our smoke. Um, I like to tell a story. Um, several years back, I believe it was 2011, um, the uh, spring football game at the University of Nebraska happened to be a day after um, a really popular, really active burning day here in the Flint Hills. And the way I hear, hear the story, just as the officials were blowing the whistle to start the spring scrimmage for the Husker football team, uh, this giant cloud of smoke migrated into Lincoln, Nebraska and settled right down into Husker Stadium. Uh, you can imagine that uh, the Flint Hills ranching community had some things to answer for on that day. Okay, moving down the list, another 
liability with our current use of prescribed fire is that uh, spring happens to be the busiest and most stressful time of year for Kansas farmers and ranchers. We're you know, worried about planting crops. We're worried about the health of our cattle, uh, getting pastures ready for them to graze. And when we add another high stress activity like prescribed burning on top of, of those other high stress activities, it can cause uh, some issues with um, labor management. Okay, another liability is, is simply fire safety. In the spring of the year, our fuel loads obviously tend to be very high. Fuel condition is dry and the winds can be volatile at this time of the year. And finding an appropriate day to, uh, to be able to control fire uh, can be fairly rare during the spring. That's another reason our smoke gets so concentrated. Now, the last reason on this list that we we sort of have some issues with our approach to prescribed fire is that uh, it isn't just woody stem plants okay that are invasive here in the Flint Hills and that uh, are economic problems okay we have other pernicious vicious invasive species here that cannot be controlled uh, with conventional prescribed fire applied in the spring of the year and the most visible of these okay, is a plant called Cerecia lespidiza. But I thank you for hanging with me. Again, my name is Casey Olson. I'm with Animal Sciences and Industry at Kansas State University. I'm easy to find on the World Wide Web. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, uh, I would really, really appreciate hearing from you. Uh, God bless. Stay safe out there during this um, very strange, unprecedented time in, in American history. Um, my thoughts are with you.